Hey guys, this is E with Scrapbooking with Me, and we're going to make something a little different today. I know every time I say something a little different, everybody cringes on the other end. <laughs> different? What? <laughs> but these are going to be easy. They're going to be easy for you to make, and they're going to look so good in your journals. So, but right before I do that, I want to say thank you to some people who would donate. Yeah. Right before I do that, I want to say thank you to some people who donate to our channel through Buy Me A Coffee. You guys have helped me out more than you will ever, ever know. And I don't want you to think that I don't appreciate every penny that is given to us. We use it to go right back into our YouTube channel to purchase items, to make things for you. All of that is used right back into our YouTube. And I've been failing to do this on every video and I've got to get started back doing it because if it's not right in front of me, I forget it. So this time I've got it right in front of me. So Snoozy, Linesborn0126, uh, Noreen, Wicked Stitches and More, McNee, Carol Ann 42, Linda, uh, DW Clance, let's see, Hi, H I L C U 2013, Jan, Carol, Laura, Karen, and Vicky. Thank you guys so, so much. And believe me, I have a lot more. I'll show you. I won't show you the what's on the page, but I'll show you this. I've got those two sheets, <laughs> those two sheets. I got about seven more sheets of people. So we'll get to those, I promise. And I hope that you're downloading your freebies and that you get my message. Uh, there should be a message sent back to you that says thank you so, so much for your support. But um, just know that I appreciate each one of you. And I appreciate all of you, even ones who, if you don't have the money to give, that is fine. I still appreciate you just as much. Just watching my videos is a big, big help. All right, let's get into this. Now, this, like I said, this is going to be something a little bit different, and I'm going to use some digitals first. We may go to some pattern paper in a minute, and I'll show you. It's just some ways that you can use up some of your pattern paper, but, or scrapbook paper. This one is one of Susan's, and this, this was said, <laughs> and Susan said that this was inspired by me, her collage of the journal pages and that kind of thing. I love journal pages. I'm an accountant, so I love journal pages. Anything that has journal pages and numbers and things on it, I love. So that's what we're going to use. Now I'm going to fold up, and what I'm going to do is look and see. I want my writing to be the right way up. So if I fold it this way, my writing is going to be the right way up. And excuse me if I've got black on my hands because I have been separating doilies all morning. Guess what? We got more doilies. So I've got some charring on my hands, which is okay by me, but I wanted to let you know what was going on. I have washed them. I, I do believe I have washed them today. So I tell you what, instead of me fighting with that, I'm just going to grab my scoreboard and I am going to put it in my scoreboard and I'm going to score at two and a half Okay, and then I'm going to flip it all the way around, and I'm going to score at, let's see, I'm going to score at two and a half on this end too. So two and a half and two and a half, and then we're going to turn it this way, and how do I want to score this? I want to score this at three, and at eight and a quarter. I believe that's going to get me what I need. Okay, so that was two and a half. Then I flipped it around and done two and a half, and then score at three and at eight and a quarter. So that's your scoring, and you can just fold it if you want to. You don't have to do any scoring. That was just what I wanted to do on there. And if you do score on your paper like this, your coffee dyed paper or your paper that you printed digital on, just be careful and don't press too hard because it'll tear your paper unless you've got a really heavy cardstock that you printed them on. So we're going to fold the bottom up and then we're going to fold the top down and just go ahead and furnish those and then just open it back up and we're going to fold over this way. Now I was inspired 
to do this. I'm not doing mine like hers, but it inspired me to give this a shot on a little bit different scale by, oh, let me think, what was her name? Oh my goodness, my, my mind just went blank as what her name is. I will put her link below and you can check her channel out. I just happened upon it the other day and she did one similar to this and it uh, reminded me that I had done something like this a long time ago in a little journal that I made. So, okay, so you've got all of your folds like that. Now, none of mine are even and that's okay. You don't have to have them even. Now, this is my bottom side because my writing is the right way up. This is the top up here. Now, I'm not going to touch the bottom, but up here... I'm going to go in right on the bottom side of that score line and then I'm going to go in right on the inside of the score line here and I'm going to clip that little box out. Poodles um, did one of these a long time ago and I was inspired by her many years ago and so I did some of them for a journal that I was making and I had forgot all about them until I saw, oh my goodness, I'll, I'll think of her name in a minute. Ooh, I just cut that little piece. Well, that wasn't good, Edith. Uh, but anyway, I, I saw her do one similar to this the other day and I thought, oh, I haven't done one of those in forever. Keep those little pieces. We'll probably use them. I may have to use it to repair my little point here. That was pretty sad. Okay, so now you have something that looks like this okay now on these little pieces right here we're gonna cut that out because this is gonna be three pockets and I just want to cut a little bit of that score line out so I'm gonna fold it back up now you can do it this way where you just cut up that line and then cut a little bit out but to me I always go crooked and it never looks right so I just fold mine back up and I just cut that score line out like that. And it just makes it so much easier <laughs> for me. Now, you may be able to cut straighter than me, but oh, when I try to cut up a score line like that, I go every which way. Okay. Just go right up. And See, I'm just cutting a tiny little bit out, but that's going to give you that little opening that we need there in order for this to fold up and then this to fold this way without it getting in the way and then I am going to let's see do I need to take a little bit off yeah I'm going to take just a tiny little sliver off on the side here too not much I'm just going to go down at a tiny 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 sliver I mean see you can barely see it but you want this, when you glue that up like that and then fold it over, you don't want that piece sticking out. And that's going to help me over here. Take that little piece off. Just a tiny piece. You don't want to take much. You'll make your pockets smaller if you do. So just a little bit like that. Okay, so that's what we've got so far. And you can see my little openings that I cut here are not exactly straight. That's okay. Just make sure that the, these little ends to your paper don't go over your score line. Because that's what you want. You don't want to have those going over your score line. Now, up here, you can do many different things. You can stamp it. I think the lady that I watched, she stamped hers. You can put other paper on it. You can leave it like it is. Anything that you want to do, it doesn't matter. I think I am going to, let's see, what, I, what have I got for my choices here? I think, I think, I think, no, nope, that won't work. I think I may put some paper on mine, but I need to find a piece that will work. Oh, that piece will work. So that piece will go there. Now these are going to be folded up in their pockets, so you only need a very little up here. Now I may, no, I won't use that. So let's see if I've got more scrap in here. I don't want to cut into a fresh sheet of paper, so. Okay, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. When all else fails, we'll use book page. So I'm just going to tear a few little pieces of book page, and I'm going to use those up here. 
And you can do that everywhere if you want to. You don't have to use more pattern paper. Now these pieces are really, really good to stamp on. If you have some little word stamps, they're good for that. And I think I'm just going to run mine down like that. So I'm just going to mark where I need to cut it off here and then over here to the side. So I have been bagging up more lace. <laughs> I've had so many people that have messaged me about wanting lace. I have been going through my stash and I've been bagging up some because I, I will never ever use all the lace that I have. And like I said, I never see a lace that I don't love. So, but I've got way too much. So I have been bagging it up getting it ready to put in bags for you guys. We I put up four last night that I already had bagged up and they sold before the night was I, well before my pen got cold. <laughs> but um so then I had some more messages this morning about them and I will definitely make sure that I get more up. I've got some more separated now, I just don't have it bagged yet. But and it, it will also be probably some material in some of them, some different materials that I happen to have that um, I have maybe multiples of or lots of extra and I need to move some of that out of my way too so it may be some material I'm gonna looks like I that one I think is okay this one I needed to get a little shorter so just watch out for that it'll be under my clearance items sale so I just wanted to let you know I am working on it and then also we got a ton of response on our new tool, our book binding tool, or I, we're going to call it, I think, we Benji and I talked last night, even though he's out of town working, I was texting him back and forth. I think we're going to call it our journal binding tool, or maybe B, journal binding, journal binding tool. I'm not sure journal binding or something to that effect. We may even call it B&E's journal binding tool. It just so happens that our youngest daughter, her name starts with the E as well. And that their company is B and E Designs, so it works out pretty good. Even, you know, you can put B E and that can stand for me or Alicia. Her name is Elisha, spelled just like Elisha in the Bible. Okay, I just need to make sure that I'm getting this on the right side, and I am. That goes there. So, I'm going to ink this up. So, we, I think we had emails for 25 orders last night. And, you know, if you, if you want one, you can still get it. You can still pre-order it. We're, we're shooting for having them ready and available by the first week in May, which is basically next week. Uh, we may have to, you know, ship some one day and some the next day. They may not all ship the same day. But if you want one, you can let us know if you want to get in line for one. Because I feel like if we put them up in the shop, they're, they're going to go crazy and... You won't get one if you're not already in line. But the people who have messaged me will be the first ones to get theirs. And I, I think I got all the emails. I will will uh, try to either message you back or I'll just let you know that I got it on the, on the channel here. I'll just name your name and your first name maybe. Let you know that I did receive your email. I know some emails get blocked when they come through, so I want to make sure that we got all the emails. And if we didn't get yours, then you can still send it to us. So he's going to be working on them this weekend, so we should have them ready and available pretty, pretty soon.
Okay, so we've got those pieces on there. I'm going to go ahead and punch some little pulls in the top of these, since these are going to be little pockets. And I'm not going to punch them really deep. Punch them just a little. Hopefully I can get them in the center or somewhere near the center. Okay, there we go. Now, this one's going to look a little strange because I cut accidentally cut that, but we will work it out. And I'm going to go around and ink this a little bit. I just like that look, as you guys know. I don't have to keep telling you that, do I? You know I like that look. I tell you, right before I ink this, I'm going to go ahead and round these corners. And I need to put a piece of paper right there to almost forgot about that center part. So I'm going to round that corner, this corner, so we'll round these top corners, and then I need to put a little piece of paper right there. So I rounded this corner, this corner, and the top corners, and then we'll put a piece of paper here. Uh, let's see, I don't, I'm going to have to cut another one. And by the way, thank you guys, all of you who sent me emails and messages and told me how much you love my videos. I appreciate that. I appreciate you watching, period. And to have you say that you love them and you look forward to them every day, that is just, I mean, that's icing on the cake. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Don't ever think that I take any of this for granted because I don't. I've learned a long time ago not to take anything in life for granted because it can be taken away from you in a heartbeat. Sometimes you have to learn that lesson the hard way, don't you? Alrighty, now what we're going to do is we're going to glue right here. We are going to glue. Hold on, I left my glue open a while yesterday, so let me... So we're going to glue right up through here, a little bitty bead, and right up this side, just a tiny little bead. And then you want to fold this up, just make sure that it lines up on the edge over here. There's that one, then we're going to do this one, and this one. Now, like I said, on this little piece right here, I've got it cut kind of crooked since my scissors slipped and decided to do their own cutting without me. But that's okay. We're going to go with it anyway. So there we have that. Now you can do some decorating here if you want. I'll probably come back and put maybe some words or something there. But I wanted to show you how this folds. You can fold it that way and that way, or you can fold it like this, either one. And if you don't want this to be upside down, you can put something else there if you want to. Um, let's see. Make sure that that folds over well, and it does. Go ahead and burnish that real well. That's how it's going to work right there. It's going to look like an envelope, but then when you open up that envelope, you've got all kinds of pockets in there. And like I said, you can do these either way. doesn't matter. But we're going to put a little eyelet, I think, right there. Or brad. Do we want to put a brad? What about a button? Let's see. Do we have a button? That would work. A button button. I don't know if we have one that would work on here because most of these I made with that other paper. Well, that one would be okay. Let's just, just use that one. So we're going to put our little button here. Right about there, I think. But you know what I want to do? I think, let me see. Okay, I'm going to do this button a little bit different. I'm going to cut the string off that I actually put on there. Cut that off. And then I'm going to take my hole punch. And somewhat, I, I think I said on my video that this was a 1 16th punch. And someone said, that hole looks awful small. Are you sure that's not a 1 8th? You know what? I think it might be. But I look back at my order where I ordered it, and it said 1 16th, but it is very little. So I'm thinking now that it might be a 1 8th. All I'm doing is just going around that hole, or those two holes, and I'm making the holes a little bit bigger. 
And then I'm going to take a bread. Let's see what bread we might have. I don't have a lot of solid breads. Mine are all colored. I have one that's cream colored. That'll work. Let's see if this works. I don't know. We're going to put... I may have to open it up a little bit more. Okay, so I put that little brad through the holes on my button. And then I punched a little hole here, and I'm just going to put it down through there. Okay. And then I want to put something over that, because I don't want that to get in the way or interfere with anything. So let me find... I have... Here's a little three-quarter. That should work. Let's see. I'm just going to punch a little circle. And we'll glue that right there. It's a not quite big enough, but it's going to cover enough of it up that it won't get in our way. And let's try to put it in a way that it won't look so out of place. Okay. Now you could use just some Velcro on this, or you could use magnets, whatever you want to use. But that, that works right there. And then we're just going to use some string, or you could use seam binding, string, whatever you might have in your stash. Let's see, what kind would we use this time? I might just use a little bit of that. Oh, yeah, I might use that. This is some of our hemp twine. And I think this is the one that's on sale right now, I do believe. I don't know if it's this one or the other one, truthfully. But we do have some hemp twine on sale. <laughs> oh my goodness, and every time I open this one up, I took it off the roll and I shouldn't have. And every time I open it up, it's like it goes, it goes wild. It's got a mind of its own. So I'm just going to tie a little bit of that up under there. Tie it again. Up under there. There we go. And then clip it. And then I'm just going to wrap it around a couple of times. There's one and two. Now my button is pretty big. You could make it a lot smaller than that if you wanted to. And then I just go around that little piece right there. I want to spread these out a little bit. Like that. And then, the good thing about this hemp twine, it will not come loose once you get it on there. So that is that little guy. Now, let's go ahead and put some bit of embellishments on there, because that's, which I love this paper, but we could embellish it just a little bit. If nothing else, we can put some um, words on there, or... Okay, I think I'll go with the little doily right there. And then I'm just going to come back across it with maybe a word. These are the Tim Holtz uh, number strips is what it's called, what they're called. And I'm just trying to find one that will work on here. That one looks good right there, if I can get a hold of it. i got to put these out in something else. I can't get my big fingers down in there good. Yeah, that will work. Okay, now, I've already inked this dolly up, but I'm going to put a little bit more ink right around the edges. That right there. And then you could always put a little piece of trim, lace or trim or something down here. Let's see what we have laying here on our desk. Oh, I like that. Let's just go with it. It was laying right here in front of me. Okay, let's put that on this side. And I'm just going to let it hang off a little because I, I think that looks good. And I want something else right on the top of that. I think I will go with a number. So let's see if we have a Tina number that we can go with. 
These are Tina from Shabby Dabby Doodah. And someone asked me, did I have a discount code for her, for her store? No, I do not. Um, I don't even know if she knows I buy from her or not. I just, she doesn't send me these. I buy these with my own money. So I'm not even sure that she knows that I purchased from her. Okay, put that right there. And I like that little hint of green in there with that. So that is that one. And now I'm going to make one out, and we're going to save these because I'm going to use those to do some punching with. I want to make one out of pattern paper or scrapbook paper, whatever you want to call it. And you can see what the difference is. All right, I am going to use some of this paper, and this is some paper that we got in the shop a few weeks ago. So far, we've still got quite a bit of it. Hadn't had anybody to purchase a lot of it. I don't. I think nobody knows exactly what it looks like on the inside. It's a very, very pretty paper, and it's called, it's from Prima, and it's called M I E L Mill. I guess I don't know. I don't know how to pronounce that. But, you know, it's got the ledger. I think that's why I like it so much. It's got the ledger pages in it. And then it's got the beehives and the butterflies. Look at that sheet. To me, the bee side on this is so pretty. And I think that's one of the things. I'll flip through a little bit more of this just to let you see. So it's got lots of cards that you could use for journaling. And look at the back of that. And look at this one. Now that is gorgeous. Love it. The back side of that one has a striped. And then there's more cards that you could use. This one's just jam-packed full of cards. Look at that. And then there is that one. That's the back of that. More um, journaling cards or tags. Already cut. All you have to do is are already made up. All you have to do is cut them out. They're already decorated and everything for you the back of that there's that one and look at the back of this one now that is beautiful <laughs> but that I will link this collection below it's called M-I-E-L ever how you pronounce that meal Mayo I don't know um I'm not sure that it matters on this one which way is up which way is down but now I'm gonna cut this one down because that's going to be way too big for what we need. So let's cut it down to maybe eight and a half. Because that other sheet is eight and a half by eleven. So let's cut this down to eight and a half. And then it's just, this one's going to be eight and a half by twelve, and that's going to be fine. It'll still go in our journal. Not a problem there. I'm going to go ahead and grab my scoreboard. Okay, this one is 12 inches, so let's see. I'm trying to see. Yeah, I scored it. Let's see, three and a half. One, two, three, four. Okay. Let's score it at three and a half. And then one, two, three and a half, eight and a half, and see what we get. I don't know if this is going to be right. I'm making this up as I go. And then this way, we have an eight and a half, so we can score it basically the same way we did the other one. I'm going to score it at two and a half, and then one, two and a half, and six. Okay, so I scored at three and a half. And at eight and a half and then on the short side I scored at two and a half and at six so we'll see what we've got now which way and see this has got a ledger sheet behind it that's so pretty that's so pretty okay let's fold that up Now 
and burnish it well. Pull this one down. You do want to make sure that they overlap. If they don't overlap, you know, it's not going to work. Okay. And then we're going to fold it in. That score line. And this one in this way. Yeah, I think that's going to be perfect. Okay, so that will be our inside. So that's going to be good because our bees are going to be the right way up. We don't have to cover any of that. Okay, let's go ahead and cut this, these little pieces here out. And if you want to put this back in the scoreboard and do your cutting that way, you can. I need to see my line there. Where is my... Oh, I just cut plumb past my line. So you didn't tell me. But you know what? We're going to go with it anyway. See, I cut that far past my line. Bad me. But we're going to go with it. I'll put a piece of washi or something on there. Or maybe a piece of lace. I wasn't looking for my line. I was just cutting. There's that. Save these two little pieces. Cute. Yeah. Yeah, I can put, uh, let's see. I can run me a piece of washi across there, I think, and it'll be okay. Yeah, I'll just run a little piece of washi. No problem. No problemo. All right. Now, all you need to do is cut out your little score lines. I'm going to fold that back. And this time, hopefully, make sure that I don't go past my little score line there. There we go. Fold this one over. And it's easier for me to cut right-handed with the way, but you can do the other way if you'd like. I have to have it over here on the right-hand side. I'm definitely right-handed. Okay, we've got those cut out, so that will fold up like that. Now, while we're here, let's go ahead and round these corners before we do anything else. Get those rounded, and then we'll go ahead and punch a little pull out of the top of these. Come here, come here, come here. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and burnish these again real well. And let's see. I could use a different ink, but I'm just going to use the brown since I have that out. I could use a rose or something like that. I'm just going to use what I have. And you can make little journal cards and things to go in these too. Let's see. I probably do need to trim off. Yeah, let's trim off just a tiny bit on the side, like I did on the other one. Just don't want that interfering or sticking out there. So just a tiny bit. Okay, so we have those inked up, and now all we need to do is go ahead and glue these little pockets down. So we have Bethany and our grand dog, little Lila Rose. We have them today. Bethany's not feeling well. She had to go to the doctor today, and she has strep throat. So Melina and them had to go to Chattanooga to, to a convention there to sing. And she just didn't feel like doing it. She had a fever of 103 earlier today, so they left her here with us. And the baby and the grand dog. So she's upstairs asleep right now. Okay. So you can fold that one over. Looks like I didn't put any ink on the back side. And 
that one and fold over. I love this paper. That is pretty. And then this will fold down like that. And see that, <laughs> truthfully, that I made that one even smaller than this one. I, pro I probably folded these sides up a little bit bigger thinking that it was going to need it, which it did not, but... Now, I think up here I'm going to put some lace. Since I did cut into that a little bit, I'm going to put lace across there. But you don't have to do that. You can do it any way that you want. Also, I'm thinking, hmm, I, I think I want to close it again with the button, though, because, I don't know, the button to me just looks good on there. So let's cut a button out of maybe this paper. So let's just use this one. I think I'm going to try to make it where I have some quite a few words in there. I'm going to go ahead and punch all of it out of this. I'm not going to get a little piece of, I usually get a little piece of chipboard, thin chipboard to put behind it, but it's going to be fine with just this. I just punched three and then I'm going to use that one for my top one. So we're just going to glue these together. Okay. Now these, I won't put the crystal glaze on just because I don't have time to wait for it to dry. But I, you know, you can put crystal glaze on these and it looks really pretty. And I think on this one I'm also going to use, uh, am I going to use a larger punch? Let me think. Nope, I'm not either. I don't want to punch it too big. I'm going to use this punch, but I'm just going to try to punch it a couple of times in the same spot, maybe. Just so the little legs of my brad will go through it. Okay, there's one. And hopefully I will get it somewhat near the center. There's another one. So now we have the little holes in there. And then let's just pick out a bread. And I have plenty of pink breads. Okay, there's a nice pink one. Just spread out those little prongs on there. Okay, that little bread's trying to be difficult with me. So now we'll punch a hole in here. There is our little bread. Let's see if we can get these little prongs to open up for us. That bread is very, very old. I've had some of my breads for probably 20 years, so no wonder they still work. Go ahead and press that down on there. Okay, there you go with that. And then we'll put that down and we'll put some string around it. I think on this one, I'm gonna use some of my white cotton string. I don't really have a pink. So we'll use this. Now I tie my knot at the bottom. I don't know how anybody else does it, but I find if I tie it at the bottom, it's a little bit easier for me to wrap around without it looking so crooked. So I don't know if that helps you or not. But see, it kind of pulls it straight down when you tie it at the bottom. And then you can go around and do your little thing on there. And there we go. And that closes everything up right there. And you could put some little dangles on here, little charms or something. Be pretty. And on this one, I think all we need is a little label because it's it's too pretty to do too much to. So let's see if we got a little label. And yes, I do have a video on this. I know somebody will ask. Um, I do have a video on how I made this. Let's see. Nope, not that one. I think I'll use one of these larger labels. And this just says timeless. Put that on here. 
Oh yeah, I was going to put a little bit of lace on the top of that, wasn't I? It's already sticky, but I'm going to put a little bit more glue on there. There's a cute pink piece right there. Oh, I need my label a little bit lower. Okay, let's just glue that there. Doesn't have to go all the way across. It's just going to look like decoration on there, even though it's holding my little flap together. There we go. Now that's strengthened that, and it is perfectly fine. So don't trash a project just because you make a little bit of a miscut or something. You don't have to. You can always fix it. All right, guys, that is it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you give this a try. And like I said, I will link below my inspiration to make another one of these. Um, I can't think of her name right now. I've only watched her a couple of times, but I'll link her channel below, and you guys can go over and watch her. She makes some very pretty projects. We'll talk to you guys later. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Bye-bye.